Hello, hello, my name is Paolo. Uh, th th this over here is Jiro, who is uh, sleeping, as you can see. Let's take a little closer look. Look at that lazy little guy. Um, today we're going to do a tutorial on how to copy an animation state from one character to another. Uh, and then also we're going to look into a pooling of objects to create like a bunch of them. Okay, so you can see here in action, basically as she walks around, she leaves behind a trail of herself. And you can see the, the different uh, versions of herself are in her pose. So basically each time I'm going to create a, a copy of her and then put her in the position that she was. And then uh, after a little bit, I just dissolve them out. And then basically they, they start over. And I can do it with my character too. You can see if I press the mouse, I can make a copy and then it creates like a whole trail behind me but this one only does it when you press mouse so you could use this for example if there's like a an ability that gives you super speed or that you know makes you uh, gives you some sort of power or something you can always use this type of effect or you can also use it for um like a more of a statue so for example this one here if i press this button she copies whatever pose i have so i jump she jumps you know she'll copy whatever it is and it just stays there um you can even use this uh this is a this is a very old school trick but you can even use this for something like a mirror where you have uh, essentially the mirror is not really a mirror it's just a copy of yourself on the other side and you're just like duplicating the positions of the bones but just altered to be flipped on the other side that is a, a very old school trick to <laughs> to do uh, to do that uh, anyway so um, let me show you how it's done so the way this works is basically we grab Karina which is my main character over here and then I grab um, I look through all her bones and she has a lot of bones right so this way it stands it starts with the biped 01 then a floor and this is just like the whole hierarchy of bones that she has underneath um, and then I basically all of these are just uh, transforms on each one of the objects so first I'm going to grab all of the transforms for this object, and then on the clone, which is this um, Karina ghost over here, she has the same bones. So basically I just grab the transforms from the first one, grab them all, copy them to the second one, and that's about it. It's as simple as that. So here we are, this is a class co called Copy Them Bones, very aptly named. And then it takes a source, which is just a game object, and it takes a, what is the root bone for this one. So uh, in this case, if we select Karina Ghost and we look at the game object over here, uh, on the bottom you can see source equals biped uh, biped one, which if I click it is the 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 biped for Karina, and then if I go um, if I click the my own root, then it's the biped one for Karina Ghost. So basically, it's taking those two parents and is using them as the roots of the objects that it has to copy. Then after that, when it initializes, it just grabs uh, components in children and grabs all the transforms underneath it. So you saw that huge tree that we have underneath. It's a lot of bones because it's gonna have like bones for each uh, phalange. Is that how you say it? I think that's how you said it. Each phalange, like the arms, the, the thing, the tail, it has bones all over the place. Uh, but we don't care too much about that because we know there's gonna be equal between the two. Uh, so we grab the source bones, we grab the bones, and then I sort them. Uh, this step is not fully necessary, but um, because it will go hierarchically to the things, you could skip this. I just feel more comfortable knowing that the, the bones are sorted by name, so it just sorts them using the name compare. Um, and then over here, it just copies the bones, and it literally just goes through all of them, and it just copies the local position to the local position, the local rotation to the local rotation. So it's just a copy, and that's how you achieve. As you can see, that's super simple. That's how you get this lady uh, jumping over here. If I click again, she lands. If I'm uh, running, then she copies the running. Whatever move I'm making, she will copy. Um, now, how do we make that but for many, many, many other versions? Well, for that, we're going to use uh, basically a pool of objects. So basically what we have here is a ghost pool. Uh, and the ghost pool basically will have um, a bunch of little ghosts. So let me do like, have like a ghost here, a ghost here, a ghost here, a ghost here. So then when I need a ghost, instead of creating one, I go, um, I go and check on here. Hey, is there a ghost? If there is one, then I can basically move this ghost out. And now um, basically this one no longer is here, right? So this is now empty and now I'm using it over here. Then when I need another one, I go and grab uh, another pool, another ghost pool, another ghost pool. If I go to the ghost pool and there isn't a, a ghost available, if I go here and there isn't one available, then I can just make a new one, 
use it for however long I need. Let's say uh, I use it for like two seconds. And then once I'm done with it, I, I instead of destroying it, uh, which is what you normally do with an object which you don't need, instead of destroying it, you just put it back into the pool. And that way, um, later on, when something else needs a ghost, it can just reuse it. Now, why go through all this instead of just like, you know, creating and destroying the ghosts all over? The main reason is because whenever you're creating an object and then you're destroying it, you're generating garbage. And that garbage basically now has to be collected by the garbage collector. And generally the garbage collector how it works is like every now and then he comes in to check for all the garbage and take it away. So if you have a lot of garbage, what will happen is there'll be like spikes in your in your um, execution time. And spikes are the dead of performance because if you have spikes, that means that, you know, most frames it'll be totally fine. And then one frame it will be uh, slower. So you'll that's where a lot of hitches come in in a lot of games. So uh, definitely something to look out for. Uh, so over here you can see, for example, there's a bunch of Dahlia clones. She stopped right now, so all of them are out of use. And now once she starts moving, she starts using all of the clones for the ones that are trailing her behind. And once she stops again, you'll see all of these objects will go deactive, or inactive again. So they're basically being returned to the pool because no one's using them right now. And once she needs them again, they start getting pulled from the, pulled from the pool, which makes sense. Uh, so that's, very, that's basically a good, very good demonstration of... Um, how a pool works. <laughs> Rebecca just uh, sent me a message of a, of a spider. Sure. It's a photo of a spider. I don't even know. What do you reply if someone sends you a, a picture of a spider? What would you reply? Um, so how that part works is basically we want to create a ghost every, every amount of distance. Now, often you would say, okay, well, if it's based on distance, I can just check the distance I did it last, like the position I did last, the position I did now, compare that distance, and then you're done. But instead of that, you can see here that we're actually checking uh, how much uh, the, the position is check changing and, say, and basically adding to it every frame. The reason for that is that, for example, you could, um, you could be starting right here, like this could be your starting point, and then if you go like this, You've traveled all the distance, but this point here, the distance here is very small, right? So that doesn't really work unless you're always going in a, in a straight line. So um, that's why we try to do like, we basically every time you move, we count how much you're moving so that even if you're doing like, you know, spirals or whatever, it's still saying, no, he's moving this amount of distance. So that's why over here we do, um, we do distance traveled and then we add to it the distance between your current position and your last position. Uh, and then over here, we just say that the last position is your current position, so that next frame we can compare them. Uh, and then we say, okay, if we're activated for generation right now, and this is just so, just so that you can turn it on and off, like I did for the main character, you saw that it only appeared when I clicked. So I can use that variable just to turn it on and off as I wish. Um, and if the distance travel is uh, greater than ghost distance, which again, will um, will we'll basically be looking at this long distance here, not this distance here. Um, then it, it says distance travel zero, so it resets it so that it doesn't um, it doesn't keep on generating them. It will generate only when you've traveled that distance again, and then it generates a ghost. And then if we go to generate ghost over here, uh, you can see it declares a copy them bones uh, ghost, and then it goes and checks into the pool, the pool of ghosts, and it says, okay, if the if a pool of ghosts has more than one item, so uh, or one at least, so if, the, if there's an object in the pool, then dequeue it. And the ghost pool is um, a class called just, it's a queue. And it, the queue is, it's kind of like a list, but it's made particularly to push objects in and push objects out. So you can enqueue them and dequeue them to like put them in and put them out. And it's kind of very intentionally made in a way that is for like, basically be taking objects in and out of it. Uh, so over here, we just say DQ. So we grab one out of that. And then we over here, we have to reset a few things because if you see over here, as they get destroyed, they basically uh, kind of deform and then become small and fade out. So obviously once we add them to the queue, all of those variables will still be part of the thing we queued, uh, or the thing we put into the pool. So once we pull it out, we need to reset those variables. 
So kind of clean it up, if you will. So part of the cleaning is removing the vertex distortion, putting it to zero and uh, changing the local scale to whatever the initial scale was, because you saw uh, particularly on the one that I'm doing uh, for myself here, they become tiny, tiny, tiny at the end. So if I don't reset the scale, uh, when I reuse them, they would be tiny invisible things, which obviously uh, you don't want. Uh, so I reset that thing and then I set them back to active. Uh, basically, when they're in the pool, you don't want that object to be active because it would just be wasting gas. So we, you deactivate it. When you pull it out, you activate it again. Um, if we don't have an object in the pool, like I was saying before, for the pool, you go and check if there's one. If there's one, you reuse it. If there's not one, then you just create one here. Just like you often do with a prefab, you just instantiate the prefab and that's the one you use. Uh, and then over here, I just tied to a ghost container. Ghost container is very, very simple. It basically is just like, um, it holds the copy them bones and then it has a life. And the life is mainly just used so that I can know, um, you know, when, um, how long it's been around so that I can do that fade at the end and all of that. Um, I can determine how long I want it to keep, how long I want to keep it alive. Um, and then over here we do, um, we grab the local position and the local rotation of the entity that's generating them. And that's what makes the, the little ghost sort of follow you. We just put them in that position, then we initialize them and then we copy the bones. And that's what puts them into the pose that you were in. And then uh, over here, so that's when we generated it in the update. Later on, we have updates here. I'm not even gonna bother too much with showing you this part. Basically, we're like going through the ghosts that are active and just, uh, you know, doing anything like fading them, changing the scale. This is just more decorative stuff that you don't really need. This is just if you want to like add some, you know, fancy fade out, if you want to add like the scale, those are just kind of like uh, cherries on top. The important part is here where we're uh, reducing the life of the ghost and then we're saying, okay, if the life is less than zero, less or equal than zero, so basically it's run out of time, then add it to this remove ghost list. And then down here for the remove ghost, we just uh, remove it from the main list of ghosts. And then we set it inactive, just like I said, if you, once you're not gonna use it, you wanna make it inactive so it stops uh, spending gas. And then you just put it back into the pool. So, you know, just toss it back into the pool. Someone else will use it later, basically. Uh, and it really is as simple as that. So uh, overall it's just, uh, actually pools in general, like even beyond this effect, pools in general are super useful. Um, most games, are actually, I, I assume the, the probably all games that you see in AAA, uh, AAA games, uh, for shooting bullets, they use something like a pool. Uh, for you know anything that you're gonna reuse a lot, particle effects that are happening very often, uh, muscle flashes, stuff like that, all of that gets pulled. Because um, again, you, if you like another effect of. Um, destroying and creating objects. Earlier I was talking about the effect of creating garbage, but there's another effect, which is uh, defragmenting memory. So basically, if you start uh, allocating things into memory and then destroying little bits out of it, you start kind of creating holes in the memory. And then later on, you come in with a larger object and it just won't fit into that memory, so it has to put it further apart. And the effect of the memory kind of being spread apart a little more is that it's slower to read. Now that's less important nowadays. Uh, I remember caring a lot about this stuff back in the days of the Wii and stuff like that, developing for that back when I did Wii games. Like you, you really, really, really had to care about uh, sequential memory and stuff like that. But nowadays it's not that important because you know, computers have gotten pretty quick, but you know, it's still good practice to try and avoid um, fragmentation and stuff like that. Um, so basically you, you create a pool. Um, again, you can use this for all sorts of different things in your games. Um, and then for the copy of the animation, like I said, like the most common uses are effects like the one we just did, uh, things like the fake, the fake mirror. Um, you can also, like if you have the same skeleton for two different models, you can make one imitate the other. Uh, the last part that I'm not actually gonna go into a lot of detail, cause it's just, you know, just a shader. As you can see, she has a shader here that kind of deforms the, 
deforms what is behind her. Basically, I'm just using a scene color, which basically gets you whatever is already rendered. That shader is a transparent shader. So basically, I, it renders whatever is behind, and then I just use a little bit of Fresnel to kind of deform it. Uh, if you're curious about shaders, I do have another tutorial that's just all about shaders. If you're cur curious specifically about how to make a shader like this, let me know in the comments, and maybe at some point I can make a tutorial specifically about how to make this sort of... Um, sort of glassy look that she has. I do love kind of how it distorts everything behind her. Um, it is a, a very cool looking effect and it's actually pretty easy to make. So let me know in the comments if you're interested in such an effect and I can kind of go over it, how it works. Uh, so that's it. Uh, as you can see, you can do some pretty cool effects. You also should kind of learn these tools, such as pooling for a lot of things in games. Every time that you think about like anything you're doing in your game where you're like creating and destroying the same type of object over and over, consider making it a pool. You'll basically reduce all your memory fragmentation a lot. You will uh, improve how you will reduce how much garbage you're generating. Very, very useful. Um, if you like this tutorial, if you learned something, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that stuff. Also, if you want to see more of this, this actually was made during a Twitch stream. So you can come to twitch.tv slash Pablo Makes on Mondays, Wednesdays, Saturdays. I'm there doing stuff and rambling and all that stuff. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Adios. Well, thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified when new videos come out. Thanks for watching.